Hi kids. Today we are going to discuss a new lesson in geography, major landforms of the earth. Before discussing this lesson, let's recap what we discussed in the previous lesson of geography. We discussed about the major domains. In that lesson, we learned about the different spheres like the lithosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere and finally biosphere. Now, whenever we see our earth from the space, its surface looks plain. But in reality, this earth is having many ups and downs. So, these particular variations on the land, safe, land surface of the earth are known as relief features or landforms of the earth. These landforms include plains, plateaus, mountains, hills, valleys, so on and so forth. These landforms are the result of two processes, the internal process and the external process. Some of these changes occur suddenly while some are gradual. See, when we are talking about the internal process, we can see the volcanic activities as well as the earthquakes. These are the result of the internal process. They originate inside the earth and result in the sudden formation of the major landscapes like mountains, plateaus, plains, valleys and all. Now coming to the external process, it works on the earth's surface and they modify these landscapes. The process of the modification of the landforms by the external force is known as gradation. This gradation again consists of two processes, that is degradation and aggradation. Now in degradation, the elevated landforms of the earth are lowered down by various agents like wind, rivers, glaciers. Okay, now this process is known as erosion, while in aggradation, the depression of the earth's surface is filled up. It is known as deposition. Now, we are going to discuss about these particular landforms in detail. The first landform which we are going to discuss is mountains. Now, coming to this mountains, mountains are the natural elevation of the earth's surface. They are formed by the internal forces. Generally, mountains have a broad base and a conical top. These mountains have large rivers of ice. They are also called glaciers. Now, what are glaciers? Glaciers are big chunks of ice. And these glaciers are the main source of water for the rivers. Now we have some important glaciers of the Himalayan mountains like the Siachen Glacier, Himunotri, Gangotri. Now the Himalayas in the Asia, the Alps in the Europe and the Andes in South America. These are the examples of some mountain ranges. The mountains can be divided into four types on the basis of their shape, size and height. Now, the first one is the fold mountains followed by block mountains, volcanic mountains and finally the residual mountains. Let's learn about these mountains. The fold mountains. These mountains are formed when the earth's crust bends due to its movements. The internal movement causes folds on the earth's surface. It results in several ups and downs. The upper part of the fold is known as anticline 
while the lower part is called as syncline. On the basis of age, these mountains are known as Engfold Mountains and Old Fold Mountains. Now, coming to the Engfold Mountains, these mountains have high and pointed peaks. For example, our Himalayas. Coming to the Old Fold Mountains, they have rounded features with low height, like our Aravalli Ridge. The next one is about the block mountains. Block mountains are formed when a landmass between parallel faults in the earth's crust is pushed up or when the land around it sinks. The uplifted part of the landform is known as orts, while the lower landform are termed as gravel. Volcanic mountains. These mountains are made up of the accumulation of volcanic material ejected from the earth's interiors. Example, Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Fujiyama. You know kids, we have one active volcano in India which is located in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And uh, in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, there is a place called as Barren Island. The next one is about the uses of mountains. Mountains are rich source of water. Mountain glaciers are the sources of water for many rivers. These perennial rivers provide water for inland navigation, hydroelectricity and irrigation. Now what are perennial rivers? The northern part of the rivers, whatever we have in the northern part of India are called as perennial rivers as they flow throughout the year. These rivers are even called as the snow fed rivers. Now coming to the southern part of India, the rivers in the southern part of India are called as rain fed rivers or non perennial rivers. The next uses of mountain. Mountains provide many building materials such as granite, marble, limestone, etc. These mountains, they maintain even ecological balance, check environmental pollution and soil erosion. Mountains even act as a tourist site also. Uh, tourists come here for the scenic beauty. Mountains provide grasslands for cattle grazing. They provide a variety of flora and fauna. They provide shelter for wild animals. Apart from the uses of mountains, we have some limitations also. So what are those limitations? They lack in fertile soil, the rugged mountainous terrain, makes transportation and physical communication difficult. The mountainous areas are not much favorable for cultivation due to steep slopes, less availability of land and cold climate. So, though we have advantages we, as we have some limitations also, mountains are thinly populated. Barely 12 percent population of the world is living in the mountainous areas. Our next landform is plateaus. Plateaus are high lands with a broad and more or less flat surface. Due to the flat topped surface, these landforms are also known as table lands. Their height vary from a hundred meters to thousand meters. Plateaus generally have a steep slopes on one side and a gentle slope on the other. Example, the Deccan Plateau has steep slopes and gentle slopes. 
these plateaus occupy one third of the earth's surface we have some types of plateaus also like the intermountain plateaus the piedmont plateaus and the continental plateaus intermountain plateaus these plateaus are partly or completely surrounded by the mountains the highest and the largest plateaus on the earth are the intermountain plateaus the tibet plateau is the world's highest plateau and this particular tibet plateau is even called as the roof of the world and it is around 4000 to 6000 meters above the mean sea level the next one is the piedmont plateau these plateaus are formed at the foot hill zone of the huge mountains these plateaus lie between mountain ranges on one side and sea or plains on the other side for example the colorado plateau in the north america and the patagonia plateau in south america the third one is the continental plateau these plateaus rise abruptly from the low lands or the sea these sorry the deccan plateau chota nagpur plateau east african plateau are the main continental plateaus of the world here is a diagrammatical representation about all the three plateaus just have a look kids now we are coming for the advantages of plateaus plateaus are rich in mineral deposits many of the mining areas in the world are located in the plateau areas the deccan plateaus were formed by the volcanic activities so as they were formed by the volcanic activities they provide a lot of igneous rocks which are the main source of black soil and as you know black soil is very good for cotton cultivation now when the rivers fall down from the high plateaus they form waterfalls and hydroelectricity is originated by the falling water and even this plateau areas can be developed as places of tourist destinations like our coastal areas of the deccan plateau let's go for the limitation of plateau some of the plateaus in the world are composed of hard rocks so therefore less favorable for human settlements compared to plain areas farming activities on the plateaus depend on the rainfall if there is lack of rainfall they are not suitable for human settlements so kids so far we discussed about two landforms one is about the mountains the other one is about the plateaus that's it for now thank you